Welcome. Today I'm going to talk about SQL full text search and embedded SQL. Um, after you've watched Eddie's presentation on build your own search engine, you already know how to build a nice search engine within the Dataflex Web App Framework. Today we're going to extend that a little bit and use SQL full text catalogs uh, and embedded SQL to uh, improve the results that are shown. To build our sample, we're going to use the Chinook database, which has artists, albums, and tracks. So we have some data to search for. So what is the SQL full text search? Basically, uh, it is a separate service that runs next to your database server, and it, it builds up a big catalog of all the, the keywords that are used within your content. Uh, it is available on all MS SQL versions, and it's not always installed by default, but you can use it on all different versions. Basically, you just create a catalog by selecting the fields that you want to have indexed. It can index any, any type of field, text fields or binary fields or varchar fields. Uh, it, it will provide you with better performance on large data sets. It has language enhancements and uh, relevance rating and uh, it's highly configurable. You can actually schedule it to uh, populate overnight uh, so it, it won't take any performance during the day. The most simplest way of using it is using the free text filter. The free text filter can be used in your work class of your uh, SQL query to filter the, the results using uh, keywords that it, it looks for in the, the, the catalog. The columns need to be part of the catalog or it will perform an error. Now we're going to look at a little sample that shows how to use this uh, within a SQL query. Now we're looking at the SQL Manager. I have selected the Chinook Search Database, and on the Chinook Search Database there is a, a full text catalog that uh, indexes the several fields of the, uh, the database. Um, to use this within a query, we simply can use the free text function in uh, the WHERE class. Uh, we're seeing a query here, and the free text function is being used to search for body count on the name and composer. So if we execute this, this query, we're basically selecting all columns from the track. Uh, we're seeing the results down here. And what we're seeing is that we're only seeing tracks that have a, a body count in the name. If I would run it without the filter, it will show us all the records, just to make sure that you guys see that it's filtered. So this is how to use the free text filter uh, in a SQL query. The next step is to use this free text function uh, in Dataflex. We're going to do that in the most simple way by just setting it as a, a filter on the data dictionary. So the next sample will show a data aware list being filtered using the free text filter. We're looking at the Dataflex Studio and I just opened the Chinook Search workspace and in the Chinook Search workspace uh, we have several views and the one we're going to look at is um, the SQL full text search view. Within this view, we're uh, seeing several objects. Uh, we have, we have a, a, a DDO structure, so the data dictionaries are all available, and um, there is a search form on top, and um, there is a list, which has several columns, and these columns are simply data bound. So, for example, the track name is just uh, bound to the, the, the track name database field. Um, so this is a data aware list. When the user searches, um, we execute the search function and the search function is defined down here. And we're getting the value from the field, we're putting that in a, a property that we have defined, the filter value. We need to define, uh, use this, this separate property first and um, we cannot read the value directly in the data dictionary because that would cause the filter to be changed on the client, uh, causing uh, synchronization issues. So here we see the property being defined and um, above here is uh, the magic. Here is the unconstrained procedure that uh, constrains the data, the, the data by setting a PS SQL filter and the PS SQL filter is just uh, generated as a string. So here we see the free text uh, filtering on name and composer. We replaced percentage one with the filter value. Uh, 
uh, the filter values actually escape to make sure that there's no SQL injection. And um, yeah, this is how we filter the list. So if we run this sample, and we go to search, uh, we get a list with all the data, and now if we uh, search for something, for example, uh, body, we see that it, uh, it finds us uh, several results, and we also see the language in enhancement in action here. It also finds bodies, uh, while we just spelled body, so it's smart enough to know that it should also find uh, uh, multiple bodies. <laughs> But what you probably noticed is that it didn't sort the results uh, on relevance. Uh, the results were just sorted randomly. Of course, you want to have the, the most relevant result on top, and especially if you're entering multiple keywords, you will see that uh, it, it makes a difference. The free text function only gives uh, true or false, but if you want to sort on relevance, you also need a relevance rating, so then you can use, use the free text table function. And the free text table function actually returns a table. And this table has a key, which is your primary key of the record that's being found, and uh, a rank, which is the relevant rating. So a number, and the higher the number, the more relevant the result is. Um, you can use this in the, the from class of your uh, query, and uh, you can actually join in the actual data to uh, show results that make sense. So we're going to look at a, a sample query that shows this. So now we're back to the, the SQL Management Studio, and here we see the sample query, and basically we're selecting everything from the free text table. So if we execute this query, we're seeing that now we get a key, which is the, uh, the primary key of the table that it found, so the, of the track table, and the relevance rating, the ranking. And we see that the first hit has a higher ranking, uh, 142, while the other hits have smaller rankings so they are less accurate. Of course, this isn't really usable, so what you would normally do is you would join in the data that's actually, um, uh, that you actually want to show. So you can do that by using a left join, where you tell it we want every record that's in the, the result set, and then we want to join in the actual record with the data. And this set query actually shows that, where we join in the track and the, uh, the album. So if you run this, you see the track ID, uh, you see the, the name, uh, the composer, the album, all the information you need, and the uh, search ranking. So uh, this is how you can show your results properly in, in the application. To use a query like this in Dataflex, you need to use embedded SQL. And you cannot use a data aware list, you need to manually fill the list. So we're going to use embedded SQL to execute the query, uh, get the results and put that in a manually filled list. The next sample will, will show how to do that. We're looking at a few that is slightly different now. Uh, the columns are not data aware. Uh, and the list is manually filled. To do this, we have implemented the all manual load data, and uh, the search function is now calling the grid refresh to trigger the refill of the list. The all manual load data uh, first gets the filter value, and it determines the, uh, the index of the columns. So you can move the objects around uh, without this procedure having to be rewritten. It's building the, the big SQL statement here, and in the SQL statement, it will insert the search uh, value here in the free text table uh, definition. Of course, we have escaped this uh, search string to prevent SQL injection issues. We're using an existing connection from the track table, so we don't have to create a new SQL connection every time we do this. And uh, we're executing the SQL statement by opening a statement and calling the uh, exact direct. And now we're going to fetch the rows. We do this in a little uh, fetch loop, we call this, and uh, we're getting it into an array of values. Now we're going to fill the, uh, the grid rows that we have received by reference when on manual load data was called. 
and we're going to put in the value for every column of our list. And we do that for every row. So here we're using the indexes that we de determined in the beginning of the procedure uh, to know where we need to put the value. So when we run this sample, uh, we're seeing that now we have an empty list because uh, it, we didn't search anything yet. And if we enter body count, we're seeing that uh, we still get the results and it still has bodies in there. And if we, for example, say body count anthem, we see that body count anthem now pops up on top because it has the highest relevant rating, relevance rating. This sample is just searching for tracks, so that will be the next step. So since the previous sample was just searching for tracks and we want to search for uh, tracks, albums and artists, uh, we're going to extend this a little bit. And uh, to do this with the, the SQL uh, free text table function, uh, we would get a, quite a complicated query. And we don't want to have this complicated query all in Dataflex code because that always is a little bit clumsy. So we're going to use a stored procedure. And to create a stored procedure on a SQL database, you can use the create procedure uh, function. You give it a name and you just uh, give it, define a set of parameters and you define the query that you want to execute. You can call it using embedded SQL and it has a special API for calling stored procedure functions. Uh, we're passing in the filter as a parameter and our stored procedure is going to uh, return the table uh, that we want to show with the results. So we're back to our SQL manager and we're looking at the Chinook search database. And here on the left side we can expand programmability, which uh, has stored procedures. And under stored procedures is our search multi-table stored procedure. If we click modify, we actually see the, the, the SQL script that is being stored. And what we're seeing is we're having uh, several select statements that we're joining together using union all. So you get one big result set that is basically the result of multiple queries. Executing this is a lot simpler. So basically in SQL you say execute uh, the name of the store procedure. You're providing the parameter, in this case search string, and uh, that just executes and gives you the big table. So now that I've executed this, we're seeing that uh, we get quite a lot of results and the uh, FTS rank is the full text rank. The type is basically where the data comes from, from track, album or artist. And the ID is the primary key on that specific table. If we go into Dataflex, we're seeing that there is a third sample. And, uh, if we look at this view, we see that it is pretty much the same as the other ones. We have uh, different columns. We have description and uh, source. And the on manual load data now doesn't have the query in it, but it's uh, going to execute the stored procedure. And in Dataflex, you do that by doing a send SQL set procedure name and then a set argument. And in this case, setting the first argument to the filter text. Uh, you don't have to um, encode it here because uh, the SQL start argument automatically makes sure that you cannot use a, string, a SQL injection to uh, hack into the database. And a SQL call actually executes the, uh, the store procedure. The fetching of the results works pretty much the same. So here we have our fetch loop where we call uh, SQL fetch row values to get uh, the different rows. And we put that into the um, uh, result rows, the, 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 the web grid rows, and they are shown in the, uh, in the list. So when we, when we run this sample, we should now find uh, multiple results, including artists and uh, everything. So if we say queen, for example, we get the artist queen and uh, tracks from queen, albums from queen, so basically we get all the different uh, types. So if you say Queen Greatest Hits, we're getting uh, the greatest hits from Queen and all the tracks on greatest hits. So 
this shows that our uh, script works. We see the relevance rating at the end, and uh, this track is on top because it's called Killer Queen from Queen, so it basically has Queen in there twice, so that's why it's more relevant than the others. All right, so this shows how to uh, use embedded SQL. Uh, we've talked about full text search indexes. We've talked about store procedures. So a lot of great tools you can use to build search functions for your application. Uh, if you want more information, please go to our website, uh, watch our other YouTube videos, and I will see you in the next video.